Lord, we rejoice in you. We praise you. We lift you. We magnify you. God, we glorify you for being good and being God. Now we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for doing the things that were wrong when we knew it was wrong. Now, Lord, we ask you to give us strength today to worship you, to praise you, bless us to lose ourselves in the service, that you will be glorified, that Jesus will be lifted, that lives will be changed, that souls will be renewed, Father God, that, that hope will be evident. Lord, we thank you now. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the Holy Spirit to have his way. Have your way in the service. Have your way in this meeting. We, we pray, Father God, that you bless the man of God. Strengthen him for preaching. Bless his words to be clear. Bless our hearts to be receptive. Bless him to be accurate, Father God. And bless him to be relevant. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to praise you. To honor you for who you are, for who you have become in us. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to see you today as never before. And that you will keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. And thank God.
about him and use an hour to, to tell you about him. I just jot down a few uh, cheat notes that I can uh, tell you about him. He is doing great things all over the world. I mean, mom and daddy are proud. They, 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 they're just proud. And, and those who are friends and family members, they're just proud. they just just glad that this young man, I, I knew him when he was not. Are you with me? I, knew, I said I knew him when he was not. You gotta ask somebody older than me what that means, but that's, I knew it when he was not. And so we've come today to honor and praise the Lord, and this young preacher has come to be with us today. He has he has matriculated through the Morehouse College system. And you don't just walk in and walk out in Morehouse. You gotta spend more time in the library than in the student union. So we have come, come today to honor God, and we have the preacher here from Moe House. He started preaching May of 2018. He is now one of, of 50 sons in the ministry by Pastor Manson Lee Johnson. Matter of fact, he is the baby of those 50. He's number 50, he's number 50. He's number 50. At one time, at one time, there were 21 of us in the pulpit at the same time. Jeez. And so when you preach there, you may be four years later, so you better come on with it. So he is one of 50, and he is a very able preacher. He is, you've already heard from one of my elder brothers in the ministry, Reverend Lester Smith. You've heard from one of my older brothers in the ministry, uh, Pastor Eric Bell. And you've heard from my twin brother in the ministry, uh, Reverend, France, Reverend, Reverend Frederick Lyons. And so today we're going to hear from my youngest brother in the ministry. He's the, the youth minister of the Homer Street Missionary Baptist Church. He's serious about the word of God. He loves the Lord. He is a family man that loves family. He's a practical joker. So I call him every now and then and I say to him, whatever I've done to you, please forgive me for it. Because I hadn't heard from him in a while. So when you stand in my, your feet and and welcome my youngest brother in the ministry, Reverend Ron George. 
in all the earth. God, we just come right now to worship and to praise your holy and your righteous name, oh God. God, the God who sits high and looks low, the God who can do all things but fail. God, we come right now coming to praise and honor and worship your name on this Sunday morning, oh God. God, we just come right now saying thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. Thank you for starting us on our way, oh God. Thank, thank you, for, you for a roof over our head and that we're in our right mind, oh God. Thank you that not only we're able to, to wake up, oh God, but we're able to get up, dear Father. But God, we just say thank you. God, you've been so good. We've seen a lot this week, oh God. We've seen, we've seen the ups and the downs this week. We've seen trials and tribulations this week, oh God. We've seen, we've seen uh, 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 mountaintop moments and we've seen valley low moments, oh God. But God, one thing that we can say that we have never seen is we've never seen the righteous forsaken, oh God. Yes, and Lord. for that, we just say thank you. Thank you. Now, God, we thank you that thank we don't have to ask you to meet us here because you're already here, oh God. Yes, we can sir. feel your presence right now, oh God. Thank we can you, feel Lord. your power right now, oh God. So we come right now to pray you would just fall fresh in this service, oh God. Have your way. Move have this preacher way. out the way. Move the program out the way so you can have your way have right your now way. in the name of the Jesus, name of oh God. Jesus. God, we come right now praying that you will sit Ryan George down, oh God, and that you will raise up in me, oh God, and speak Lord through Jesus. me, oh God, to share with your people what thus says the Lord. Now, God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, yes, and we give you all the honor. Yes, Lord. It's in your darling son Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Well, this is the day you all may be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I said, I will rejoice. Yes, sir. I will rejoice and rejoice, be glad man. in it. Yes, My sir. soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then the, the psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I said, with me, with me, yes, sir. let us exalt his name together. I am so excited and I just can't hide it to be in the house of the Lord one more time. If you're excited about being in the house of the Lord one more time, can you give God some praise on this yes, Sunday sir. morning? I thank God for allowing me to stand and speak. I want to... Praise God. Can you all help me praise God and celebrate your pastor, my big brother, Dr. Matthew Davis? You all can do better than help me celebrate Dr. Matthew Davis, your pastor. He's been laboring day in and day out through the pandemic, and he's been doing a phenomenal job. We've had many conversations. He's, he has kept me encouraged through the pandemic, and I just want to publicly tell you, Thank you. Many times I wanted to, to throw in the towel and, and I just get a call from Dr. Davis keep telling me to keep on going and keeping me encouraged. I appreciate that. We praise God not only for Dr. Davis, but we praise God for his wife, Sister Carolyn Orr Davis. God bless you. My favorite thing, I love to tune in and, and watch her sing and listen to her sing. I also have another friend. Um, I've never met her before, but we've talked. Uh, Miss Vera. Is Miss Vera here? Ms. Vera's not here, but I, if she's watching, I want to tell you thank you so much for uh, all of our communication that we've had uh, through these past couple of years throughout the pandemic. I really appreciate it. Yes. There is a word from the Lord. You all will please stand with me. There's a word from the Lord found in 2 Corinthians, or as the former president would say, 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12. You're right. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to commence at verse number 7 and conclude at verse number 10. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Second Corinthians chapter 12. 
I will begin at the seventh verse and I will end at verse 10. <clears throat> there you will find these words. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Yes, sir. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it, may, that it might depart from me. Verse number nine says, and he said unto me, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You all don't mind, I'm going to read the A clause of verse number nine. And it says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. For the time that is ours to share together on this second Sunday of April, I want to tag this text, a two-letter word, no. 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 Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what do you do, what do, you do? when God Says no. Preach, no. man. I'm not lying. You all pray with me as I'll be preaching in the pulpit. If there's good praying in the pews, there'll be good preaching in the pulpit. Yes, Amen. sir. And yes, sir. Growing up, I was grateful to have my parents and my mom. She would do the picking us up from school and feeding us and making sure that, that we were good. So it was hard to get over on my mom a lot of times. If we were to go to the grocery store, she knew how to tell us no. If we went to, to get something to eat, she knew how to, what, what we were going to eat. She knew what we, what we could and could not order, and she was not afraid to tell us no. But every now and then, we would hang out with my dad, who would have to do some of those chores, who would have to, to pick us up from school and take us out to eat and, and to feed us and all this kind of stuff. And my dad... He was really the yes man. It was, it was hard to get over on my mother. But it was kind of easy to, to, to play my dad. It was easier to, to get him to, to get us what we wanted growing up. If, if we wanted some shoes, I knew to go to my dad because he was going to tell me yes. If, if I wanted to order from the big menu growing up when we went to Pop Do's, I knew to, to go with my dad because I knew he would tell me. Yes, I, I knew that, that if I wanted to, to, to order the, the large fry at Chick-fil-A, I knew that my mom would say no because she knew that I, I, I couldn't really eat all those fries. But my dad always said yes. My, my, my. Growing up, I, I, I remember in high school, I wanted to go to a high school party. And I, I, I strategically knew which parent to ask. I already knew my mother was going to say no. I already knew that my mother was going to say no. I, I remember even uh, if we wanted McDonald's, show response would be, do you have McDonald's money? Right. Anybody have a mother like I did? <laughs> but I knew my dad would always say yes. And, and my dad, I, I strategically asked my dad because I wanted to go to the biggest, the baddest party in high school. And I knew that my dad would say yes. I went to my dad, my friends had boosted me up. I told my friends, you don't have to worry, you don't have to, I'll be there, I'll be there. My friends are, are making sure that I have a ride and making sure that I'm good and all that kind of good stuff. And I said, don't worry about it, I'm going to ask my dad. I went to my dad, I, and I really didn't even ask him. I said, dad, I'm going, going to a party. And he shocked me. My, my, my. He shocked me <laughs> with these. With one word, two letters, no, 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 what do you do when your father tells you no? I see you. Somebody that, that knows about the nose of life is my friend named Paul in the text. You all 
may know Paul. I know you have a, a Bible-based preacher who, who teaches you the word day in and day out. I want to tell you all about Paul just in case you all don't know him. Paul was someone who, who knew firsthand about being told no. Paul, he spent most of his, his, his life persecuting believers of Jesus Christ, but then became the biggest believer of Jesus. Paul, Paul, who he had a life-changing encounter with Jesus, on that Damascus road. You all know Paul. Paul who, who shared the good news of Jesus everywhere Praise that he man. went. Paul, he, he wrote Praise a letter man. to the early church at Corinth. And in this letter, he tells us he is experiencing a thorn in his flesh. Yes, sir. A thorn was given to him. And the thorn, this, this sharp object in his side, is causing pain. Yes, sir. Someone say pain. 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 But still to this day, philosophers and theologians and preachers and scientists have all been trying, historians have been trying to figure out what is this storm? What could this storm be? And I love how the Bible does not tell us what the thorn is. Because many times, we spend so much time trying to figure out what someone else's thorn is, and it's none of our business. Preach, man, preach it. But what, what, what if this thorn could have been temptation from the devil? Was it some sickness on his body? Was it haters? Was it some physical condition, like an eye condition? Was it some mental illness that he may have faced? We don't know what this storm may have been, but we know that this storm caused pain. Yes, sir. I used to play outside, and when I was a kid growing up, we don't play outside much anymore. Uh, but I used to play outside, and I would every now and then I, I would bump myself into a, a stick of bush. When I stuck myself into that stick of bush, that caused great pain. But that still did not compare to the pain that Paul was experiencing in his flesh. I, I, I was vaccinated three times. And if they tell me to get one another time, I'll go back and get it. Yeah. But I've been I, I've gotten that needle in my in my arm three times. And, and that caused great pain. Preach, man. Preach it. But even that needle, when we go to the, to, the, uh, to the doctor and they draw blood, and it may cause us pain, but even that needle does not compare to the pain that Paul was experiencing in his thorn, with this thorn. I, I, I've been in the gym lately. I've been in the gym the past couple of months, and my suits are, are not fitting much as, as they used to because I'm, I'm getting bigger. I'm trying to gain weight. I don't want to you know, be five pounds all my life. So I'm trying to gain a little weight. And, and, and I, went to, to the, I went to the tailor. And she was letting the, letting the pants out and letting the jacket out. And she had these, these, these sewing needles and all these great, great things that they do to, to, to tailor your suit. And I got my suit tailored. And she stuck a safety pin in my leg. Ouch. Ouch! That caused great pain. Yes, sir. But even that safety pin that got stuck in my thigh and in my leg, that did not compare to the thorn that was in Paul's flesh that was causing him pain. Not only did Paul have thorns, but we all have thorns. Yes, sir. Your thorn may not be my thorn. My thorn may not be your thorn, but we all have thorns. It may not be a literal thorn. It may not be a physical thorn, but we all have figurative thorns that we deal with. And it brings us pain. Yes, sir. Maybe your thorn is depression. If it's not depression, maybe your thorn is, is sickness. Maybe your thorn is a bad habit that you can't seem to break. Maybe your thorn may be gossiping. Maybe your thorn may be some level of toxicity. 
Maybe your thorn may be not having uh, the, the, the motivation to find a new job or the lack of finding a new job. Maybe your thorn is low self-esteem. Maybe your thorn is addiction that keeps you up at night. Maybe your thorn is having no motivation. Maybe your thorn is being stuck at a job. Maybe your thorn is being stuck with a person for 18 years who you can't stand, feeling overwhelmed, cheating, some disease that may be attacking your body. We all have thorns. Preach it. Preach it. And if you say you don't have a thorn, your thorn may be denial or lying because we all have thorns. We try to overcome our thorns, but it becomes more and more painful. We read books and we do research trying to figure out how to get rid of this thorn. We, we try to go to, 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 uh, to therapy. We try to go to the doctor. We try to, to sleep it away. We try to drink it away. We try to, to eat it away. But we all will have to face some thorns. Yes, sir. Great. And these thorns, they're painful. Something about pain is pain is inevitable. You can't run from pain. No one, no one likes pain. You can hide it all you want, but it's still painful. Pain is unavoidable. You can do all you want to do to run from the pain and to, to try to get rid of this pain, but pain will catch up with you and will find you and knock on your door. Sometimes pain comes in with suitcases wanting to move in. Sometimes pain comes with a U-Haul truck and you don't know when this pain is going in. We all will experience some pain. If you don't believe me, ask Mr. Job. Job says a man born of a woman is a few days old and full of trouble. If you don't believe Job, you can ask Jesus. He says, in this life, you will face tribulation. Yes, I'm glad that Jesus didn't stop there. He says, but, but be of good cheer. I have come yes, to sir. overcome the world. Yes, sir. I've, been, I've been wrestling with this text. Any good preacher, it, 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 they, they scratch their head every now and then. Yes, sir. And trying to figure out what the author was trying to to portray and to convey. Why is it that this loving God, this caring God, this amazing God who has the power to do all things but fail, why is God allowing Satan to send pain? This gracious God, this loving God, this amazing God, we praise God about God is my everything, all that. We praise God, but God, is, why is God allowing us to go through this situation? Why does God allow us to go through pain? Why does God allow us to, to have thorns in our flesh? Why does God allow things to be sent to us that we don't want to have to deal with? And, and I believe that Paul teaches us a few things about how God handles thorns. And first thing that Paul teaches us about pain is God has a reason for our pain. Someone say God has a reason for our pain. God gives our pain a purpose. Paul says in verse 7, so I do not get beyond myself. So I don't think I'm more than what I really am. So I don't think that I got to where I am by myself. God allowed a painful thorn to be sent to me. And it messes me up, church, because God is allowing Satan Preach it. Preach to it. send something to me. Yes, sir. But this is where I shout. If you don't shout over anything else in this sermon, that even though the devil is sending it, the devil still had to get permission from God to use it. Preach it. Even though the devil sent it, he had to get permission Preach from it. God. And that even though the devil may have sent it, it shouts me that God allowed it. 
The devil sent it, but God allowed it. And that's the kind of God that we serve. There's still good news and because we serve an omniscient God. You're right. We serve an all-knowing God. God is our security. So God won't let anything happen to us without God knowing. You're right. You're right. God won't let anything happen to us without God knowing. So that although the devil may have sent it, God is already in the background saying, I already know what's coming. You can't mess with my anointed. God has allowed some painful situations to come into our life. Yes, sir. So every now and then, every now and again, God has to allow some pain to be sent to us to keep us humble. To keep us humble. God will allow pain to, to keep us coming to church. God will allow some pain so that we can grow deeper with God. And every now and then, God shakes some stuff up and allows some pain. God knew that if you were to have your way, if you, everything was to go your way, you would take God for granted. Yes, sir. God knew that if you would have gotten that job, you would stop praying like you do. God knew that if you would have gotten that man or that woman, you ought to stop coming to church like you do. So God has to allow some pain so you would not get exalted above measure. If I didn't have pain, I wouldn't come to church like I do. If I didn't have pain, I wouldn't pray like I do. If I didn't have pain, I wouldn't have the faith like I do. My faith would be weak. If I didn't have pain, I would think I got to where I am on my own. God allows pain to keep us humble. Preach, man. Preach it. The songwriter says, if I did not have a problem, I would not know God could solve it. I'm grateful for the things that I've been through because now I know what God can do. I know that God is a keeper. I know that trouble don't last always. I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Church family, some things as we mature through God, we ought to just know some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know what God can do. It's not what I heard. It's not what someone told me. I know for myself what God can do. I know God will break me out. I know God will open some doors. I know God will close some doors. I know God will move my haters out the way. I know that God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I know some stuff about God because I've been through some stuff. And if he did it before, God is able to do it again. Same God right now is the same God back then. I know some stuff. I know that songwriter Betty Wright you all don't know Betty Wright. You all have been in, in church all your life. But Betty Wright sings a song that says, Tonight is the night that... Well, well, that's the wrong song. That's the wrong song. She sings, she sings another song. She sings another song that says, I can see her rocking. And she says, No pain? Yeah, you all know it. No pain? And then a background singers come behind her and say, No pain. And then she says it again. She says, no pain. I can see her rocking. I can see you all looking good in, in that nightclub back in the day. Thinking about somebody that has caused you great pain. And she says, no pain. And the background singers say, no pain. But my favorite part of the song is she says, no pain. And then she says, no gain. And I just believe that God will have us go through pain so that we can gain all the blessings that God has in store for us. No pain, no gain. Nothing worth having, church, will come easy. You better learn to be grateful for your pain. The devil sent it, but God allowed it. And God will not allow something that God cannot use. God uses it for our good and for his glory. 
Joseph said it. He says, when you meant for evil, God knows how to use it for my good. God can use your trials and turn them into triumphs. God can use your misery and turn them into miracles. God can use your burdens and turn them into blessings. God can use your pain and turn it into purpose. God has a reason for our pain. Not only does God have a reason for our pain, but church, can I tell you one more thing I saw in the text? God will direct us in our pain. God will redirect us in our pain. Paul went to God about his pain. And I love that we have a God who we can bring all of our pain and all of our burdens and all of our worries to. Because when we cannot handle it, we serve a God who is able to handle all of our pain. Yes, sir. We sing this song. I don't know if you all see it. I'll sing it over here, uh, Dr. Davis. Kirk Franklin sings a song. He says, uh, it sounds so cute. It sounds so, so, you know, everybody, whenever I hear the praise dancers at my church, they're always dancing to it and flowing around. And everybody just starts shouting and all this kind of good stuff. And because they, it sounds so good, it says, uh, 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 he will never Put more on me than I can bear. And they say, never, 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 never. Ne all the, you know, everybody just running around, shouting, and sounds so good. But church family, I, the song is beautiful. But I have to disagree with that song. Because every now and then, God will put more on us than we can bear to show us that we cannot handle this pain. We cannot handle what we're going through. We cannot handle these situations. God will put more on us than we can bear so we can give our problems over to the Lord. God will handle all of our burdens and all of our pain. And scripture says, Paul took this problem to God one time, two times, took, took this problem to God three times. And after the third time, God responds when Paul is asking to take this thorn, this painful thorn out of his flesh. God responds to Paul and God doesn't say, I'll remove it. You can go on about your day. That's what we want to hear. God doesn't say, uh, you are you, uh, uh, loose here. You are good to, to walk free now. He, God doesn't say you are no longer bound. God says an answer that we never like to hear. God says no. God, this prayer answering God, this promise keeping God, this way making God, this healing God, God who can do all things says no. Sometimes church, the answer to our prayer is no. It's not because you lack faith. It's not because you didn't pray right. It's not because you, you missed Sunday school. It's not because you, you missed the mark. Sometimes God just says no. Sometimes the answer to our prayer is no. Even if we've been three times like Paul, the answer to the prayer is still no. This isn't what I want to hear. I know that's not what you all like to shout about on Sundays. I, I know that that's not the popular preaching nowadays. I know that you can find somebody else that'll tell you to name it and, and claim it. And it's a man on BT at one o'clock in the morning that says if you if you send me fifty dollars or something. I'll send you some miracle water and all things will be well. I know that uh, some people will just, just smile and be nice and nothing, will, nothing bad will come your way. That God doesn't want you to experience this. God doesn't want you to go through this. But every now and then God says no. I hate to bring you the bad news this morning. But sometimes God just says no. God help me to get into this dream school. And I get a denial letter. 
God, let me get this house this year so I can, I can move out and, and, and the house gets sold to somebody else. God, give me this new job because I'm miserable where I am and I get rejected. God, heal my husband and your husband gets worse. God, take this cancer away and now the cancer spreads. God sometimes just says no. Anybody ever been told no before? Anybody ever been told no by God before? You wanted something so bad. You wanted something so desperately. You knew that it was yours. You knew that your, your, your qualifications met. You knew that everything lined up. But still God says no. We shout when God blesses us with, with the house. We shout. When God blesses us with the car, we shout when God blesses us with the deliverance, with the healing. But can you praise God even when he says no? Can anybody praise God when God tells us no? What do you do when God's answer to our prayer is no? You have to learn to, to trust God through the no season of our life, the N-O seasons of our life. You must trust God through the no seasons of our life. I remember graduated from Morehouse College. I'm the man. I'm looking good. Had my resume in one hand, had my suit on. I know I qualified for these jobs overqualified. I, I know I met the material. I know I met the qualifications. And God said no. I'm grateful for every single no that has ever been given to me. Because whenever there's a no, God has a greater plan and a greater yes down the line. So I dare you all to just look back over your life. Take time to think about the times when someone has told you no. The times when you had to were told no and write a letter to that school that rejected you and say, school, you rejected me, but you can't even afford me now. Write a letter to that girl who rejected you and say, back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You're all on me. Write a letter to, to, to that person that rejected you and, and say that, that you can't even afford the job. I'm, I'm working a good job now. I'm glad that you told me no because now I have something that's greater and you can't even afford me now. Dear ex-wife, you tried to take me down, but I finally learned how to love myself. I'm grateful for the nose of life because it was protecting me. Yes, sir. Those nose were protecting me. I'm grateful for the nose of life because it was redirecting me to where God wanted me to be. Rejection is God's protection. Leading you in another direction. Let me say it one more time. Y'all can put that on Facebook and, and give me credit. Rejection is God's protection leading you in a new direction. Now, <laughs> I rejoice over my nose. I get happy over my nose. I get excited over my nose because I know from experience God has something greater in store for me. So I want to just encourage somebody who, 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 to who's been told the no's in life, who's been having to deal with the painful situations of being told no, after no, after no, after no, after no, to keep praying, keep believing, keep trusting, keep applying, keep the faith, and know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. God has a reason for our pain. And God redirects us in our pain. But lastly, someone who's been dealing with some pain and dealing with some thorns and dealing with God knows, God's nose, God won't just give us a no. I told you that God has a reason for our pain. God redirects us in our pain. But lastly, God has a remedy for our pain. God responds after three times in verse number nine. 
and says, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'm glad that God was specific in, in his grace is sufficient for thee. God says, if you're looking for a remedy for your pain, God won't take the pain away, but he'll do something even better. And he'll give you not just grace, he'll give you some my grace. And it, it's all that we need to make it. It says my grace is sufficient for these. Some of you all are still sitting looking at me trying to figure out why you get so excited about, about grace. You all must not know what grace is. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is God doing to us what we do not deserve. Grace. Is God blessing us even when we are wrong? Grace is God's kindness towards us. Grace is God not treating us as our sins really do deserve. You all saw Will Smith and, and, and Chris Rock the other day. I, I'm not here to tell you who's wrong or who's right. But all I'm coming to tell you is that they were both recipients of grace. And the only difference between their problems and our problems is that ours did not get recorded. I remember uh, when I first entered my car to preach, uh, I got so many phone calls. Someone said, Ryan, how were you called to preach when we went to uh, Miami spring break together 2017? I gave a what word? Grace. <laughs> Somebody else called and said, Ryan, remember when we went down to, to Bourbon Street in New Orleans during college? Uh, well, how were you called to preach? I said, Grace. <laughs> Somebody else called me and said, Ryan, we were just at the hut last week getting more than a turkey leg. And I said, he said, how are you called to preach? I said, grace. But that's God's saving grace. I want to talk to somebody about God's sustaining grace. The sustaining grace that keeps us. Tell us. Sustaining grace that covers us. Tell us. Sustaining grace that watches over us. Yes, One sir. One songwriter said that it's so amazing. I can't even put it in the word. It's amazing grace. Yes, sir. How sweet the sound. Yes. Yeah. Say, a wretch like me. Come on. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toys and snares, I've already come. Grace, 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 grace brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me up. Is there anybody on a Sunday morning that's grateful Come on, for God's preacher. grace? I'm glad God's grace tell us, tell is us. keeping me. Tell us. I'm glad God's grace tell us. is sustaining me. How did you make it? Grace, how did you make it? Grace, how did you get through a pandemic? Grace, what's keeping me? Grace, what's covering me? Grace, Pastor, how to make it to 59 years? Grace, don't be great. It's not because you rode those bicycles, it was all because of God's grace. Yes, sir. I'm glad for His amazing grace. Amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing it's grace. grace. Yeah. I'm reminded of another man. He didn't have a thorn. Tell him. Side. Tell him. He had some thorns on his head. I see you. You know that man. Yeah. He had a thorn all over his head. They pierced him in the side. He hung Preacher. his head, and then he died. Yes, sir. He died on Friday. He died on Friday. He put him in a borrowed tomb. Tell him. It was borrowed yeah. because one day he wouldn't need it anymore. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And he died. Then he died. Yeah. He died yeah. until the moon dripped blood. Yeah. He died until the sun refused to shine. Richard. He died. Didn't he die? Yeah. He died. He stayed there all day Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday morning. He stayed there all night Saturday night. Yeah. But I'm so glad that the story did not end there. Because Sunday morning, I don't know what yeah, time sir. it was. It could have been 3 a.m. Yeah, it could have been 5 a.m. All I know. It was early, early 
Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. Is there anybody on a Sunday morning that's grateful for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins? I'm glad that he got up on Sunday morning yes, with power yes, in his hands. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Power. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, God, here's your power to deal with your pain. I'm glad he died on that cross so that I can yes, have sir. victory in my pain. Yes, I can deal with my pain because of grace, because of his blood, because of his love. I have all I need to deal with my pain. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Shout yeah. Shout yeah. 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 I'm grateful for God's grace. I know he's all right. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm grateful. Yes, sir. For God's grace. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Because your grace and mercy brought me through. I don't deserve to be living the way that I am. But God saw fit to bless me anyhow. And for that, I got to tell the Lord thank you. If you're grateful for God's amazing grace, give God some praise on this Sunday morning. There may be one who wants to experience yes, Lord. this grace. There may be one who wants to experience this love of Jesus who we shout about. Yes, Lord. There may be one who is experiencing pain and says, Preacher, I can't deal with this pain. I've tried to do all that yes, I could. Lord. I've tried to smoke it away. I've tried to drink it away. I've tried to do all these things to get rid of this pain. I can tell you right now, I have the remedy for your pain. And it's God's grace. So if you need salvation on this morning, I dare you to walk out. If you need a church home on this morning, I dare you to walk out. And this is a Bible-based, Bible-believing church that will help you grow in God's Word. Is there one? The door is open. The door, the door of our Father's church is open. Yeah, Lord. The door is open. The door, the door is open. God's grace. Yeah.
about the word serious about the Lord and certainly he has spoken to us here today why don't we thank God for the man of God I, I wanted him to come today not because of any special occasion he's not here because I'm tired he's not here because I'm out of town I just wanted him to come and preach to you and preach to me and let me tell you, he accomplished that goal today. He has accomplished that goal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He wrestled with the text. And if preachers would just wrestle with the text, lives would be redeemed. If people, if the preacher would just wrestle. Thank you, brother, for wrestling with the text. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for this man of God. He has tremendously blessed us, us today. I said he has tremendously blessed us. God, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So if you're waiting on God to come down and give you a sermon, you just heard one. Go back and look at the tape. Rewind it over and over again. And, and he, he has given us a timely word because... If you're here today and you're not going through anything, just stand up so we can pray for you now. If, if you're not going through anything, just stand now so we can take you before the Lord. So he has given us a timely word. We, we're going through stuff we've never been through before. And even when God says no, his grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, I can run on a little while longer now. I can, I can make another week. He says, my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah to the Lamb. This man came preaching. I mean, preaching. In seminary, there, there would be three things that, that he would have to do, and you can tell me the day that he did it. Number one, he would have to be accurate, meaning that he would have to preach the word of God. Number two, he would have to be relevant, meaning that the people can identify with what he had to say. I said he had to be relevant. He, he, he can't be antiquated. He, he has to be relevant. He's accurate. He's relevant. And this man has been sure. And God has blessed him to stand flat-footed and preach the word of God. Yet he was sure about the word that he is priest. Too many times we get confused and we remember people when when they were young and we still think they're the same little boy that we saw crawling under the pews. But today we see a full grown man. I said he's a full grown man and immersed in the word of God. While I'm standing here, I want to thank I want to thank uh, our visitors who are who are present with us, who, who have come to support him. I want to thank his parents for being being a role model in my daughter's life. Let me tell you, you know, all of our children climb up fool's heels. You, yours hadn't gotten there yet. You don't know what I'm talking about. Just give it a minute. Just 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 give it a minute. I mean, both of these people who. <laughs> 
I mean, when I couldn't call, you know, sometimes you get to a point where you can't even call God and you need some Jesus in the flesh. I called the two of them and they were able to say things that I wasn't able to say. And they mentored my daughter back to sanity. So that means she was in insanity, right? So they mentored her, both of them mentored her to, to sanity. I want to thank God for faith. Thank you, Faith, for being here. That's my twin brother's daughter. And uh, I want to thank, thank God for, for her presence. I want to thank God for her presence. It is now offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you would, raise your hand, and you will be served. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand, and you will, you will be served. If you're giving electronically, you can go to Zell and Deal. Our Zell account is lifting. Lower the music just a little bit. I'm, I'm asking for money. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I, I, want, I don't want people to miss their blessing. If you want to give by way of Zell, uh, you can go to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is, as we lift Jesus, he draw all men unto him, even when we're dealing with money. Uh, Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our PO Box is PO Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's PO Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Lord God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for money. We thank you for jobs. We thank you for increase. We thank you for blessing us, Father God, to give back unto you. Lord, we ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. I want to ask this side to stand and follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes off against sacrificial gifts. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless this side to stand. If you would follow first impressions from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all. to praying for others this week. We want to keep in prayer Derek Woods, uh, Henry Hall, Gwen Dorset, Ava Lane, Ava Foster, Tommy Hemingway Jr., Jonathan Garcia, Julian, Corey, and Destiny Garcia, Tanisha Renario, and also Sister Lillian Darrington as she goes uh, for surgery. Father God, we thank you now. Lord, we bless your name for these who names we've called. We realize that there are others, Father God, that you know of that we don't know of. We ask you to touch and heal as only you can. Bless, Father God. Keep us focused on you and bless us to keep these in our prayers. We pray, Father God, that you heal them. Touch their bodies. Touch their mind. We ask you to encourage them, Father God, that they will walk according to your will. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless them, Father, that they would know, Father God, 
that your, your grace is sufficient. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. Why don't we thank God again for this service, for this command of God. God has blessed us, blessed us again, and we thank God for it. We'll ask him to come back and recognize uh, his visitors and also um, benedict us. Thank you again, Dr. Davis and the New Beginning Church for having me. I pray God's blessings on you. Thank God for my mother, my stepdad, Mr. Burrow. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And my best friend, Faith, is here. I appreciate you. I can always count on it. It's good to have a friend named Faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, too. All of your, your hospitality is good to, I'm the youth minister, it's always good to see some young people back here on the, on playing their instruments. I love this. This is, this is a world renowned first class church. I love this. And, and I just, and I just, as my former pastor would say, not hallelujah, but a doolalooyah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Would you all please stand and let's benedict. of our God, the love of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. Mission and vision statement. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto you. You are dismissed. Come by and shake the preacher's hand and bless him. Encourage him. Thanks.